Hello friends, welcome back to the Dethroned YouTube channel. In this video, I will teach you a very powerful Town Hall 12 attack strategy through a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's called the Super Bowler Smash, and it can steamroll any base you throw at it, whether it is a trophy base, a tournament base, or even complicated ring bases. This is the base troop composition. Of course, you need to make changes according to the specific village layout. Now let's get started. The first thing we need to do is create a narrow path into the base for our kill squad. This is done in order to make sure that all of our main troops go to the core of the base instead of wandering around. To create this path, we need to clear both the sides of the base. We will use our Grand Warden at 12 o'clock along with some healers to do that. At the bottom corner, we will use a Flame Flinger and a Baby Dragon. We should always remember to destroy these mortars using balloons, otherwise they will attack our Flame Flinger. To access the core, we will use Super Wall Breakers to break down these layers. We will use a Jump Spell to access the next layer. We will use the Rage Spells back to back which enables our bowlers to steamroll this base with insane momentum. This plan might seem a bit complicated, but let me do the attack and show you how easy it actually is. Alright, let's start the attack. As I mentioned in our plan, the first thing we need to do is deploy our Grand Warden at 12 o'clock, followed by our healers. We will deploy our Flame Flinger once the mortar gets taken down. We should always use some balloons in front of the siege machine, even if there are no mortars nearby. This is done to check for hidden Teslas that might catch our Flame Flinger off guard. Now let's give our funneling units some time to do their job. We can allocate 60 seconds for that. Anything over that is not recommended and might result in a time fail. We can deploy our Baby Dragon right when this Archer Tower gets taken down. So it can clear these buildings with ease. You might be thinking that enough funnel is created, and why I'm not just deploying the kill squad already. The reason is that I'm waiting for our warden to wipe out this entire compartment and make it empty. We are doing this to make sure our wall breakers don't open these wall blocks. We want them to open these wall blocks instead. If you didn't know already, super wall breakers go for wall compartments that have buildings inside them and not the empty ones. Let me give you one more tip. If you want the wall breakers to go into deeper layers, then deploy them back to back. If you deploy them one by one, they might go for wall compartments on the sides. Watch this part again if you are confused. We will deal with the enemy CC troops using poison spell and a freeze. As I said earlier, we are using the rage spells on our bowlers back to back. You can see the insane amount of momentum as a result of this. I dropped the jump spells this way for a reason to give our troops easy access to the town hall. You can see that our bowler group is still going strong. This is what happens when you know exactly how to guide your troops, using well-planned wall breakers and jump spells. The only enemy of this strategy is time, because we are using up 60 seconds just for the funnel. But I will teach you how to overcome that and become a master of this strategy. I will teach you how to attack a wide range of bases in this video, including layered and ring bases. So watch till the end. Next up, I will show you how to destroy the Town Hall with Flame Flinger. Alright, now let's see how we can take down the Town Hall using our Flame Flinger. Obviously, this works only on bases that have the Town Hall placed towards the edge, and not surrounded by ground-targeting expos. Actually, what we are doing is just creating the funnel using our Warden and Flame Flinger, just like in our previous attack. The only difference is that we can destroy the Town Hall along with it this time. Keep in mind that the Flame Flinger attacks the Town Hall only if it's activated. If there are defenses around that with a one-tile gap, the Flame Flinger shells landing on those defenses will trigger the activation of Town Hall. If there are no defenses nearby, you might have to use an Earthquake on the Town Hall in order to get it activated. I recommend using three scout balloons around this area, because layouts like these usually have Tesla farms near the town hall compartment, and these Teslas are dangerous for our siege machine. The recommended order in which the kill squad should be deployed is Ice Golems first, then the King, then Bowlers, followed by our Queen, and finally the Balloons. These balloons are really important as they can scout for air mines and protect our healers. We can't use multiple wall breakers here because of the layout, so we are using an extra jump spell to open up the wall compartments. Up next, 
I will show you how to take down a ring base. Before that, leave a like if this video is helping you learn something. Also subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos. The problem with ring bases, especially open ones like this, is that it will split up our kill squad and scatter them around the base. So, in order to create a perfect path to the core, we need to clear out the corners a bit deeper. This will leave no choice to our kill squad except going straight to the core of the base. From there, we can use a jump spell to access the back end. Now let's see the plan in action. All right, let's deploy our Grand Warden at 12 o'clock, backed up by the healers. And as always, a scout balloon to check for air mines. We need to destroy this mortar at 4 o'clock before using our flame flinger. Now you see why it's always worth it using a balloon in front of the siege machine. We just exposed three hidden Teslas. I know I'm narrating the same stuff over and over again, but that's the best way to learn it. You will memorize all the key steps by the end of this video, and you can use that knowledge to bring home three stars every single time. Our kill squad basically just consists of four bowlers, an ice golem, and our heroes. So you can use the remaining space to carry some baby dragons to help the funneling process, or you can bring some wizards to help clean up the base faster. I used a rage spell on the warden to help speed up the process as our time is running out. Our flame flinger has done a good job at clearing out six o'clock. The whole corner will be wiped out before our kill squad reach that area. All right, the 60 seconds are over and it's time to enter the phase two of the attack. That is deploying the kill squad. I'm using headhunters to deal with the enemy queen, and I use two super wall breakers just to be sure. This is a heavily defended area, and we need to get through this as quick as possible using our rage spells and warden ability. We don't need to worry about damaged CC troops as they won't do much against our tanky units. But if it's a Lava Hound, save the Poison spell for the Lava Pups. It's always better to start the attack near the Eagle Artillery and take it down as early as possible. But we didn't do that here because that's not the highest of our priorities. While attacking a ring base like this one, the highest priority is to find easy access to the core compartment. Here, the easiest way to enter the core is through 1 to 2 o'clock, or through 10 to 11 o'clock. We chose the former one this time. Hey, you kept watching this far. It was well worth it because in the next attack I will show you a high-risk three-front funneling method. It can be used against bases with heavily protected back-end town hall, so keep watching. All right, let's start the attack by deploying our Grand Warden at 9 o'clock and our Flame Flinger way off at around 11. We are doing this to create a much more precise and wider funnel because the Town Hall is behind five layers of wall and the Kill Squad path should be as narrow as possible to enable them to go to the core. Here, the Warden will clear up this area and the Flame Flinger will wipe out this area. And finally, we will use our third funneling unit that is our king and witches, to clear out this section of the base to create this narrow path to the core. If you're wondering why I didn't use the flame flinger at 3 o'clock to take down the town hall, that's because that area is protected by eight defenses. And I'm pretty sure layouts like this have Tesla farms and giant bombs in that area, so it's safer to avoid using our siege machines in such areas. As I said earlier, use super wall breakers back to back if you want to destroy multiple inner layers of wall. I'm holding on to the jump spell for now. Let's see in which direction our bowlers will go and then use it accordingly. I know there are other ways to attack this base, like going from either 12 to 3 o'clock side or 3 to 6 o'clock side. But I did it this way to show you how to get our troops to enter the back end of layered bases like these. We will do one more attack before ending the video. Again, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if this video helped you learn something new. Comment below your feedback or what you would like to see next. Your support in any form is greatly appreciated.
Watch this attack and predict the troop placements. If you got them right, you successfully learned this strategy. Don't worry if you got them wrong. There are more than one way to attack a base.